Hello and welcome to day six of the Festival of Innovations at Rashpati Bhavan. The festival has seen a series of initiatives and events covering various aspects of inclusive innovation. Today, we bring before you the highlights of the festival of the recently concluded events through a discussion with senior officers of Rashpati Bhavan. The festival today saw a discussion and interaction with leaders of the banking and financial sectors regarding financing innovation. The key recommendations emerging from the roundtable discussions were presented to the Honorable President. Yesterday, a roundtable discussion on innovations in medical science and biotechnology was also held. Hope you enjoy viewing these highlights. Today is the sixth day of the Festival of Innovations and we just focused on an extremely important topic. How do we finance innovations? What were your impressions of today's discussions? I personally believe that today's uh, meeting must be the most crucial meeting of all the other sessions we have had. Because you can have innovation, you can have leaders in the field, but they will not reach the state of fruition unless you give them the finance so that they can make it economically viable. Otherwise, it will remain at the grassroots level. And today, what is most interesting according to me is that we had uh, the chairperson of IBA, we had several CMDs of banks, and for the first time we talked about risk management, which means that they were showing a willingness to extend financial support to innovators. And there were some very interesting suggestions or opinions which came out of this meeting today. I think the first and foremost is that at least one percent of the total funding should should go towards funding innovation. And the second takeaway, according to me, is that there should be risk management and not risk aversion. The third, which I believe, is that normally we finance only if you get great ratings. I think for the first time they said we should not focus on rating because when there's somebody coming in with a new innovation, there is no rating. And the last, which I thought was quite interesting, was that uh, a suggestion came that if there is a person X who is an entrepreneur, he may have studied abroad for about two or three years. He must have spent a lot of capital on it. <laughs> a portion of the money he may have spent towards it should be considered as a margin money. I thought that's a great uh, suggestion. Which came. Excellent. Uh, Suresh, we had a very interesting mix of people today. You had people both from the banks and from the government, but also some private sector, including startup ventures and interesting entrepreneurs. How were they chosen? Who all were the interesting people there? You know, the best, uh, the best model for financing innovation is uh, not only one sector participating in doing the finance, but it's a public-private sector kinds of participations. So basically, we decided to mix the people from the private sector who are venture capitalists, angel investors, and also the CMDs of the public sector banks who understands the constraints of the public sector banks and the other side which understand that how actually the system can operate and help the startup ecosystems. So keeping this uh, requirement of the innovation and the startup ecosystem, we decided to merge these different kinds of people. So it became a very interesting and uh, diversified panel. I think uh, the Minister of State for Finance, Jan Sinha, made a very interesting uh, point where he said that we have innovators, we actually have money, there is no dearth of money, but the big challenge is to find the entrepreneurs who will commercialize it and actually take the business risk involved. Oh. Our uh, Minister of State for Surface Transport and Ports was also extremely interesting. He has done a series of innovations on his own Correct. in various capacities in which he has worked. Uh, and he talked about waste to wealth and knowledge to wealth. You know, the Minister of Finance also said a very remarkable thing that innovation in India for India, that's a very important concept that you innovate for your requirements. So that goes in line with the things that you use your indigenous capacity of intellect, entrepreneurship, and ultimately leading to job you know, the, creations. You know, the basic, the basic point he was making is that you just don't copy what is done abroad because it will have no local relevance. He was talking about innovation for India, innovation for the local needs. I thought that is a great point he made. 
Yeah. At the same time, there is also the point which the president has made in many of his speeches on innovation, which is that if we can do experiments in India and make a success of it, it has global relevance. Countries across the world, especially other like developing countries, can learn from Jaipur us. Foot is the best example. So, and all these uh, startup ventures and the kind of mobile applications, etc., are coming, uh, can easily be transferred. Uh, but I think the Honorable President summed it up today. In a, you know, in a speech which was quoted in one of the newspapers, it was said very clearly that a banker can open in one hour the number of doors which an innovator can only do so in one year. I thought that was a very cardinal statement. You know, sir, there's another very important thing which happened, but like President has been calling about uh, integrating the educational system with the entire startup and ecosystem. But the problem has been that how to get them and how to motivate them to develop these kinds of systems. So today this launch of portal, um, that should be startup Mitra, is a very important system where all the educational institutions, the students, the faculty members can log in and they can be a part of the ecosystem. So this ecosystem will definitely take care of some of the financing requirements. So what is going to happen for the first time in the history of independent India, that we are going to create the educational systems entrepreneurial ability with the financing system and vice versa, which is likely to generate more number of patents, more number of uh, startups in the country. In fact, uh, the startup ecosystem, in fact, that uh, portal which have started contains a wealth of information from the number of investors, the new innovations. Suppose there is a person X who is an innovator, he can look for finance, what is the relevance, in fact, this brings in, actually in one place all the information an innovator would actually require. And this is a great service. I can give you one example which I saw yesterday about the medical exhibitions. A live example I'll give you. There was one student who passed out from AMU, and they are engineering students, and they have developed a portable ECG machines, which cost a few thousands of rupees. Now, uh, they have tested, it's working out well. They tried on me also, and I could see my ECG on my palm top. So these kinds of applications has a wide ramifications for the public health system in India, where so far we have not been able to transfer these kinds of technology or healthcare system in the remote villages. Yeah. But what is happening that those students don't know where to go and how to go for so getting the finance for their projects. So these kinds of things are there. So now, probably this ecosystem taking shape in place, these kinds of funding requirements will definitely all the stakeholders going to be. in one place. Something which uh, particularly impressed me was uh, a stretcher which was attached to a motorcycle. So in many rural areas in India, there are no paka roads, and it's difficult for a vehicle, to, a four-wheeler to go. But if you have, and, and, and if a person has a heart attack yeah, or sure. if he has injured in some way and he has to be rushed to the nearest hospital, then you can initially take him on a motorcycle up to the wherever there is a paka road, and then he can shift in an ambulance. Not only paka road, even a narrow road, uh, the patient can be taken through. It was a little tea bag kind of thing which will purify water. You just yeah, dip that right. into the water and it can purify it's, the water. It is extremely important. Another impressive thing was the so-called tree climber. Yes. Uh, that's right. In the uh, you, could, uh, you could climb a coconut tree. Anybody can climb Anybody a tree. Can climb. Yeah. <laughs> These days, uh, uh, you, will, you will have plenty of coconut, but you will have nobody who will climb the coconut tree to pluck the coconuts for you. And this coconut climbing machine is quite interesting. It's just like climbing stairs. And I think that's a great grassroots level innovation. And similarly, one thing I'm uh, talking about public health delivery system, I also liked a lot about uh, the portable Sirudhara unit, which is uh, the innovation of itself with the Rashmati Bhavan, that today the alternative system medicine has not taken shape because there is no portability. So by using these kinds of little innovations into the systems and the processes, actually you can popularize uh, these uh, uh, traditional systems of medicines and to upgrade the, the health problem. level. That's what is most important. Yeah. I think the most important takeaway is that all the stakeholders have come together and they have understood that we need to do much more for innovation, for India and for the people. That I think is the greatest takeaway. I think um, this integrative platform which President has given to the nation in terms of bringing the universities, colleges, medicals, financer, everything on a single platform is one of the biggest and the largest uh, initiative of such kinds. 
definitely this is going to spur as for the innovation in the country is concerned and more so it will capture the the educational institution which i consider are the hotbed for the innovative ideas and think i think across our country there is a lot of talent there are a lot of people who are looking at problems around them and trying to find solutions local to those solutions problems. to local problems correct today with the advance of technology with the internet with startups mobile apps etc the possibility of expanding these little innovations what from the grassroots what is successful in one corner will get immediately transmitted to the other corners and that's how it'll permeate the entire society already india is supposed to be the country with the third largest number of startups yeah. anywhere in the world so if we can truly build on this base i think we are uh, we are going to reach a take off stage with the banks Very coming soon. in to help them uh, you know from the point in, of view of finance all the stakeholders yeah. together in every startup life cycle what is we call is a death valley cycle in the cycle there's a death valley if you don't nurture the innovation in and that particular phase of death valley whatever brilliant idea may be is going yeah. to die so is the initial phase of any creative idea which is important to be nurtured which is important to be financed so that it can really take the shape of it thank you very much thank you, thank you. Thank you.